Third long. Gloria is at first. He walked as well. Strike three called. Carlos Pena put up his hand asking for time, and Hernandez didn't grant it. And he's going to say that was too late. Second time in the at-bat. Yeah, you mentioned it. A, lo- a late chance to ask for time two pitches ago. It was granted. This time he tries it. Is not given it by Angel Hernandez and takes a fastball right down the middle of the plate. Pena's request initially was granted. And it was awfully late. And then he's going to Joe West saying, that's your job. You're the crew chief. And Joe West saying, me? I'm down at third base. You can see Joe West saying, it's my fault. But two times in the at-bat, Pena asked for time. Both times very late in the process. The second time it wasn't granted. And good for John Buck. He stayed right in his crotch, gave the target to Kevin Gregg, who delivered. Well, you're concentrating so much on that pitcher and everything happened around. You don't know that the batter has signaled to the umpire. So good for him to stay right after it. Let's take a look at it and watch the sequence of what happens. Pena is getting set, and so is John Buck. There's the timeout, and there's the pitch. You see, the catcher is getting his sign. The umpire is in his crotch. Pena asks for time. You can never assume you're going to be granted timeout. They have to hear it. That's late. Off the plate. Two balls and a strike. Three and one. Bases loaded. Two outs here in the ninth. Curve ball went around the corner. According to the umpire, Greg thought it was a good pitch. Three and one. He walked it. It's a one-run game. Kevin Gregg telling Angel Hernandez that's a strike. Into center field. That'll get down. That'll score two. Longoria comes in. The ball gets away from Wells. Jaso scores right behind him and all the way from first base. Here's Ben Zobris. A three-run double by Sean Rodriguez. Rough inning for Kevin Gregg. He struck out the first batter. And he ended up walking five in the inning. You can see he's talking to Angel Hernandez. Hernandez saying, just go to the dugout. And he just got thrown out of the ball game, and now Kevin Gregg. This is not a good move by Kevin Gregg. Obviously frustrated by the inning. Where was that pitch? Now we take a look at it. Boy, a good run to it. But Fox Track says it's off the plate. And Jason Kendall didn't appear to be startled when that wasn't called a strike. But now, well, Kendall may have not looked startled, but he's a veteran, so he knows how to communicate with the umpire without anyone else knowing about it. And Ned Yost is ejected for the first time as Royals manager. You know, I don't blame Ned because from our point of view, Frank, it appears that Kendall didn't do anything, at least anything that was visible, that he was unhappy with the call. So you really don't know there's a confrontation until Mike Easterbrook decides to take his mask off and 
crouch in front of Jason Kendall and let everyone know there's a problem. I agree. That's totally the umpire era right there. The catcher should be allowed to ask for pitches, and he should be allowed to ask where this pitch is. And umpires usually will talk from behind, but when you walk around and get in front like he did to Jason Kendall, then that's going to always bring the manager out, and that's always going to tell the umpire, hey, you're wrong. But, I mean, I, it just wasn't a very professional move by Mike Easterbrook. And he's still talking to Jason Kendall. Well, the Nats can really make the error hurt. Bailey Harris first pitch swinging. Are they going to send Bernardino? Yes. And the ball hits the mound. The Nationals score. Everybody is safe. You've got to send a guy with that kind of speed. Zach Flock to Willie Harris, even though he didn't hit it very deep. Well, it was effective. That's what speed does for you. Dusty Baker's going to come out now and argue the play at third because that's another run in scoring position. But right here, you're going to see a very nice throw until it hits the mound on the fly and goes right. So Stubbs, strong throw, and then Desmond is off the back. That is a bad call at third base, by the way. Will attack him after the fact. There's the first play on the score. Now the umpires are consulting, and if they call Desmond out, Jim Riggleman will come out. I knew it. That's just a brutal call. And now Desmond's been tossed out of the game by Joe West, who continues, who continues to toss people out. The run will count, obviously. With You're going to tell me, though, Bob, the first base umpire walked across the field to make that call, and then he jets the shortstop. That is just unbelievable. Bud Selig has to retire Joe West. Elvis had a key hit back in that 7-1 fourth inning. Drove in two. There goes Borbone. They're pitching out again. Jason's throw. Oh, they tagged the leg. And Ron Washington is out to argue with Chris Guccione out there. Borbon looked like he had the bag, but Guccione is going to say that the tag got down on the on the cleat of Borbon. What is? Yeah, he, he's going to say he tagged him low. You're right, but in the umpire's mind, he tagged him low before the hand got to the bag. It's a tough call for an umpire. Very difficult to see the tag and whether the hand got there in time. Great look at it here. Yeah. Tagged him on the on the backside. You know, if he tagged him on the backside, he might have gotten it there in time. Walsh just got tossed. Ron Washington thrown out of the game. Boy, that is a bang, bang play right there. It sure was. And, you know, he, he, it definitely looks like the arm got in there. But when you watch it in slow motion, if the tag actually occurred, you can't tell for sure, but if it did, well, it looks like it might have gotten there in time. Listen to the crowd getting behind their manager here. I've never been in that position, but I gotta think if you get out there, you get tossed and 30,000 people start jumping up and down, just makes you argue a little bit more for them. One of the best ovations of the night. <laughs> Boy, things just escalated quickly. Run by the Gooch, Chris Guccione.
the progress of a runner as a fielder without making a play on the ball. Let's see what happens here. Ball ricochets and goes way over to the right. I mean, I didn't see any contact that impeded the runner there. And evidently, Jim Rubelman has just been tossed. Well, I agree. I agree with Riggs. He's getting out of the way. He's running out of the way. He doesn't know where his base path is established. He rounds that bag like he's rounding the corner with a sack of groceries. He didn't cut that bag short. And Desmond's doing everything he can to get out of his way, and you cannot change your paying path to the next base, he actually reached out to push him or touch him. So I agree. I think that's a bad call. I don't like to say that about umpires and judgment calls, but Desmond's doing everything he can to get out of the way. I mean, heck, if he goes forward and goes the other way and Phillips runs that way, what the heck does he do? I mean, that, that had nothing to do with him being out or safe at third base. What got him out was his big turn around second. You agree, Bob? I do, because I think the replay showed that Ian was trying to scramble out of his way. <laughs> Two balls and a strike to Scott Rowland. Double play ball, but Desmond comes home. What a collision. And Brandon Phillips wipes out Will Davis, who drops the ball. And he's safe. And Brandon Phillips and I would have a personal confrontation somewhere in the next couple of days. Not because he ran over. I like that play. You run over him all you want, but if you slap yourself in the heart and doing all that stuff, I don't like that. I, I mean, I am not a purist. I'm a traditionalist. But let me tell you something. I don't care if you set the catcher in the in the third row. I like this play. I like him running over. Knock him out of there. That's the end of the game. But to do all this pumping and everything, uh-uh. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Now to now to Brandon Phillips credit. He oh, runs right it. down oh. to first base. I think he knew it was going to happen. And a lot of guys, Ray, would have charged the mound right there and caused something. We tip our cap to Brandon Phillips now because the Nats did what they had to do. Batista has been tossed from the game. And there's no chippiness here. Two strikes. Swisher went too far. He's called out. Molina puts the tag on him. Home plate umpire Bruce Dreckman called him out immediately. Now Joe Girardi is back. And he is out here now to talk about this. And he's out of the game for talking about strikes. Automatic ejection and... Frazier gets a big strikeout. Joe Girardi gets ejected. Remember when Nick Swisher struck out in the third inning on that inside pitch? He had some words for the home plate umpire. And then he was just asking him for some help on that check swing. But Bruce Dreckman saying, I saw it. I saw that you went around. I'm going to call it myself. I think that's why Swisher was so hot. That's why Girardi is hot, too. Well, Bruce Dreckman didn't hesitate. He called it quickly. It's a change-up that's down in the dirt. You be the judge. Does Swisher go around? Watch Dreckman, the home plate umpire, sees it right away and says, you did. So now the infield is in. You can see that Joe Girardi comes out, and then he gets ejected. Strike on the inside corner. Lupinello and the Cubs will be here. And there goes Ichiro. The pitch is lined right to the second baseman. And the throw to first by Kendrick has got Sean Figgins. Well, we're back uh, with the Mariners leading the Angels by a score of 3 to 1 and a heck of a development that while we were away for a commercial, as Sean Figgins was into it with the, with the umpires, in particular with the first base. Umpire and has been ejected from this ball game. There's Tim Sheeta. And uh, Figgins, I think, still wasn't happy about the 3 1 pitch. 
Well, he, he ran in from uh, being out at second base and got into it. And now look out because. Okay. And Tim Sheena now and the M skipper Don Wakamatsu nose to nose. Wakamatsu has been thrown out once this year, as you recall. And he's about ready to go again. Just about ready to go again. Sheeta has just had enough, or has he already been tossed? He's already tossed. He's been him. tossed. So for the second time this year, Wakamatsu is to us, and it all happened between innings. Wham! There he goes. He's gone. <laughs> and Matsui's numbers are are decent. But Vladimir Guerrero has been terrific for the Texas Rangers. Guerrero with 47 RBI, second most in the American League. Only Miguel Cabrera has more. How many home runs? How many home runs he has? He's not in the top 10 in home runs. 47 RBI. Eric Cooper chirping a little bit with the A's dugout. Well, what if it came up to the last pitch? The last pitch was a strike or called a strike. This is called a strike, but maybe the the talk came before on the first pitch. Well, Bob Garrett, a good job because of getting in front of Eric Cooper. Cooper was trying to get past Bob. To find out who was talking. Here's the first pitch. And they probably from this side, from the A's dugout, looked at the height and realized that Kurt Suzuki had a ball called Shin High. And if they're saying that wasn't a strike, maybe a little bit outside. Now Jim Scalen is leaving. Well, Jim, I give you a lot of credit because I thought. After the Boston first game, he was going to get run in Boston. So yeah, it he's took hung on for a while, but <laughs> we're not surprised that. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes. Tori Alba, no one out here in the ninth. No. All right, three called, and Tori Alba can't believe that. He thought it was high, and he'll get thrown out. Of course, that. Play up for Larry Vanover and get out of there, Tori Alba, yeah, before you get yourself uh, on suspension as well. That's the first out of the ninth. Of Vanover, it's been a puzzling call for him tonight because yeah. he's been very tight in his calls but consistent. Then the last couple of innings, all of a sudden, he's calling pitches strikes that were not strikes earlier in the game. Well, the pitch that was thrown was a curveball from Greg. Now, yeah, of course, it, says it was on the line. I thought as soon as that ball was caught, that's why I said what I said. I thought it was inside. And, and umpire Vanover was right. That was a strike oh, to Rialba. He's going to get in trouble with that. You see the helmet make contact with his hat? Three and two now to Roland. And strike three called. Roland disagrees. He cannot believe it. And he's been thrown out of the game. Well, I'll tell you what, it was not only Scotty Rowland that went off on Hunter Wendelstad, it was the entire Reds dugout. They all jumped up and down when Wendelstad rung Rowland up because from the dugout, all you see is high and low. You can't see in and out. And they jumped in unison when they saw that call by Hunter, Hunter Wendelstadt and Dusty Baker, who's been tossed, is absolutely livid. Well, you 
take a look. How in the world is that called strike three? Man, oh man. I mean, you can miss a call on a 2-0 count, on a 1-1 count, but when you ring a batter up on a pitch that is nowhere near the strike zone, that's when you've made a mistake. Gomez grounded out to Ian Stewart tries to bunt and Todd's going to tag him out as he went up the line for the second out of the inning although it does move Luke Roy into scoring position but that was Gomez bunting for a hit. Absol bunted it to the wrong guy. Absolutely did he bet to the gold glover at first base he bunted it hard too close to the line see how Hilton kind of bowed himself out into the infield and it comes over. Here's the problem you're going to have the call is of the home plate umpire. And they're going to say Helton missed it. But the home plate umpire, Mark Colson, has that call between first and home, and nobody ever called him anything, safe or out. Jim Tracy out to argue with Larry Vanover. I mean, and. and yeah, that's right. He's going to go down here and ask the home plate umpire. It's his call. Now he's going to go and ask Todd, did you get it? You wonder if Mark Carlson just deferred to the more veteran umpire, even though it was his call. Well, what I think he's going to say, I didn't see if he got him or not. You're going to get an argument either way out of this deal. I can tell you right now, Jim Tracy's going to explode, or Ken Maka, either way. Uh, you know, and 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 that, yeah. that one. Man. Yeah, Ken Maka's going to come arguing, and just five or so. I mean, after a couple of them doing, they get together. And he's Cedar is there as well with Larry Van over, but George, the umpire mechanics are until that play gets to the bag, whether it's a ball or the runner, and it looked like Todd him. just got him on the shoulder. That's the home plate umpire's call. He did get it. Exactly right. It is a home plate umpire's call. He just never did make the call. Now let me ask. I mean, he's out of the he's out of the 45 foot box, but because of rounding, does he get more room? Well, I mean, a lot of times umpires won't call it, and you're trying to avoid that move to get by the bag. A lot of times they won't call that. As you look up the line, see he's going out to avoid the tag. You're looking at everything Vanover's looking at. He's got a perfect angle right here to make the call. But see, it is his umpire. It's this right here. It's the home plate umpire's job to make the call. See, Vanover's looking at it. Kenny Mock is trying to get tossed, it sure looks like. That's exactly right. That's exactly what he's trying to do. See, got what he wanted. And that's what the fans wanted, too. <laughs> they would respond. I like a lot of umpires who sat and listened to it, and they understand the gripe. But now he's been tossed. Go ahead and get off the field. Jeff Nelson trying to calm him down and walk him to the dugout. And you know what? That, that much of a delayed call, you can see why they get a little bit hot about it. Take the out and be done with it. So Willie Randolph will take over the bench coach. It's interesting. Larry Vanover is the senior umpire by way of age, but Jeff Kellogg, the second base umpire, is the crew chief. We have had no bases on balls till right now, and time now for a direct TV game break. And it's the Red Sox against the Dodgers. Manny Ramirez returning to Fenway Park in Boston. And there he is getting a single off of Tim Wakefield in the top of the second inning. Eventually would score on Garrett Anderson's single. And then going deep, a solo home run, his eighth of the year off of Tim Wakefield, four to two the score. And Victor Martinez had hit a home run with a man on. And the Dodgers and the Red Sox battling. And a pitching change made as uh, Burnett will leave the game and Miguel Batista will come running in from the bullpen. We'll be right back. Verbiage in there with Sam Holbrook not happy with uh, the way he's called balls and strikes today. His team is on the short end of a 1 nothing game and Holbrook uh, standing firm here. And here they are. Yeah, Dick, I think what we've heard over the last couple innings, a lot of, uh, you know, 
talking in the dugout over to Holbrook, and it was Riggleman that finally came out and said, listen, you know what, I don't like your strike zone, and I'm sure he had some other words for him, and he ended up getting tossed out right there as the pitching change was made. Still in the bullpen. Lost him. And Barton is aboard. And you have some good speed on the bases, too. Let's see what Joe Madden does here. There may be a question as to one of the first announcements that I heard had Wes Helm sitting there. That was the announcement in the press box, but that isn't always right. Because I almost wrote that down because it was something you and I were talking about between innings. Where was Helms going to hit? Where was Barton going to hit? You know, I I thought I heard Barton was in the nine spot. To be honest with you. Yeah, I heard Wes Helms. So you notice Joe Madden obviously waited till the bat was over, then went out to discuss that with the home plate umpire Lance Barksdale, who has the lineup card and should have all the changes. Well, I mean, Freddie is, and Freddie's been tossed out of the ball game. Well, I'm guessing because he might have made a mistake. If, well, in see, the dugout, it has Martin. And so you would expect that the Marlins told Lance Barksdale that Barton was in the ninth spot and Barksdale yes. wrote it down incorrectly. So no mistake by Freddie because you have conclusive evidence right there on the wall in the dugout where the lineup is posted and where the changes are all made. There it is, ninth spot, Brian Barton. And there's no... Remember, Wes Helms was on deck. See, Helms, Helms' name was there, was scratched out because he was on deck. He was on deck. Now you see Helms up higher in the number three spot in Hanley's spot. When Paulino made the last out of the eighth inning, Helms was on deck. But that doesn't necessarily mean he goes into it that spot. It doesn't mean he has to go in there. No, exactly right. So Freddie has himself a good argument thrown out of the game or not, he's going to stay there and plead his case. Now, Frey's getting his money's worth right now. And, I mean, there's not much you can do if the umpire writes it down incorrectly because the umpire turns around and then tells the Rays dugout what he thinks is the batting order. And that's the one that Joe Madden has in his dugout. Right. And Freddie's just hanging around because he's listening to Barksdale try to explain this to the crew chief, Tom Hallion. Freddie knows what he did. He knows that he had Helms. He had Helms on deck. He initially had him in that spot, but once the final out was made, Helms didn't come in the game. He made the switch, put Barton in that spot, put Helms in the number three spot. And if, in fact, uh, he loses the argument, Barton is out. But Garrett did. One, two. That one is pulled wide. That's a fair ball. First base umpire Bill Hahn called it a fair ball. I don't know if he saw it. He had to leap to get out of the way. And Brendan Donnelly now talking to home plate umpire Paul Emmel about that. I don't know if Hahn was in any position to see that. John Russell going to question him about it right now. I think Russell probably asked him about the, you know, the same thing that uh, that you are. I mean, getting out of the way like that, did you actually get a good look at it? Can you get some help? Appealing to Paul Emmel, the home plate umpire. Here, Darling Crew Chief comes over to get involved. 
and, and judging by John's reaction, he's not going to get a call here. No, nope, they talked it over and uh, agreed it was fair. Let's take a look. Now it has to go over the top of the back. Oh, it even hit the chalk. See that? Oh. It hit the chalk beyond the back. It's definitely fair. Uh, even if it bounced foul, he, oh, you know what? It looked like it went off. Did it go off Garrett's glove? I think it goes off Garrett's glove. No, it doesn't. It went under his glove. But uh, in that first replay, you could see a puff of white where it hit the chalk. But it wasn't a line drive. It was a ground ball. It didn't have to hit the chalk. John Russell has been ejected. And he's really getting his money's worth. Well, John, I'm sure he's frustrated with the with the way things have gone the last couple of weeks. And and uh, before I saw that replay where he hit the chalk, I thought the ball was foul. And John leaves to a standing O. So that'll be a double for Russell Brandon. Watch this is this will be the best shot we have. Where does it hit? Yeah, see see the little puff of white brought up chunk. Yep. And since it was a one hopper and not a line drive, even if that ball is in foul territory, the umpire can still say, well, it hooked foul, it went over the top of the back. That's right. With runners up third and less than two outs. And he lines that one on one hop. Picked up by Donald. There's one. They won't get two, and the Phillies get a run. That's what speed will do for you. Oh, wait. Now they're saying that Ibanez has interfered with Anderson Hernandez. So that means the double play is in the books, and the run doesn't count. Wave off the run, and the inning is over. Let's take a look at it. The ball was hit hard. Donald, Donald make it, made a nice play here. Watch Raul go after the infielder. Looked like it was interference. Charlie Emanuel is talking to the first base umpire, Jerry Davis. He's the crew chief. Charlie has just been ejected from this ball game. Third time this year he's been ejected. Sam Holbrook, who's the second base umpire who made that call, he was the one who threw Charlie out of the game. There it is. And this is why. Jason Donald, the second baseman, makes a nice play here, Sarge, but here's where the interference occurs. Yeah, barely getting it out of his glove. Now, the rule of thumb is that when you slide, you got to be able to tag that base or touch the base. And when you see him sliding there, there's no way with that slide, he put those hands up. Now, you see, nowhere near second base. Didn't miss by much. Three and one. This one's out to center field. Is it going to hang up? It does for Torrey Hunter. And there is out number three. Middle of the eighth. Welke talking things over between innings here because Fernando Rodney apparently yelled at Bill Welke and was ejected from this game. It doesn't matter because Rodney was only going to go one inning. So you'll get the obligatory fine. Swinging a little one hopper to second. Phillips will come home. They get the out at the plate. We'll turn it into a double play. Wow. That's a great play right there. Brandon Phillips probably could have caught that on the fly. Let's it bounce. Obviously, it's not infield fly because, because it's not in the air. Not, not a pop-up in the air. That's what I think that's what Bob Guerin's saying. Hey, it's an infield fly. Because you saw Brandon Phillips right there not catch it. It's, it's almost like a low line drive. What a smart play by Brandon Phillips. Gets the out at home, rings up the, and, and gets a guy at third. Jerry Crawford saying, hey, that ball's not a pop-up. It's not a, it's not in the air. Well, infield you, fly. Bobby, Bob Guerin saying it's an infield fly. Yeah, you make you make the point uh, well. That, that's exactly what Bob Guerin's trying to argue. 
Jerry Crawford's not going to put up with too much of this, though, either. Skipper, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Crawford, get, you know, veteran umpire, he gets fired up, too. It's escalating. Start the clock. Start the clock, America. He's about 20 seconds from being run. He's saying, the, Bob Garrett's saying, the ball's in the air. It's an infield fly ball, but the, the, that ball was, that ball could have got down. He <laughs> gone. <laughs> he, had to, he had to do it at that point, oh, right? Jerry, yeah, he, he, Jerry Crown is not going to not stand but for that I, all day I mean, long. Bob Garrett had to make sure at that point that he got thrown out. Oh, hey, Bob Garrett's got to get thrown out right there. He comes out to make the point, doesn't hear what he wants to hear. But see here, so, he might have a point, but... The ball is a sinking. It's a sinking line drive. He's not camped under the ball. You know, he's not coming in to get that ball. That ball is a sinking line drive. I don't know that any of the umpires called for the infield fly rule. Usually, that is a tough ball. You know, off the bat, you'll see the signal that the infield fly rule is in effect. And yeah. I, again, we didn't get a good look at, at the. Uh, well, this might tell us if somebody was putting that hand up in the air. No. No. No one Not was. at any point. In fact, clearly you saw Jerry Crawford say, no catch, no infield fly rule signal was given. You could you could really make the point where that ball was, it was really a dead ball. I mean, that ball was not hit that well, and it, it, it was dying when it got to Phillips. Obviously, I think Phillips could have caught that ball, but it wasn't, it wasn't so noticeable that you would call the infield fly rule after the ball left the bat. Smart play by, either way, it's done. Smart play by Brandon Phillips. If it wasn't info, it should have been an info fly, and he gets away with it, or if he just made the smart play. But letting that ball drop, he gets a guy to play. Obviously, Suzuki's going to hang up and wait for him to catch it, but Bob Guerin's got to get tossed right there. He did the right thing. He he still believes that it was an info fly, and Jerry Crawford was, you know, obviously only going to put up with so much, but that's, that's the right call. Rosales. Here it is if you missed it, America. That's it. You're gone. <laughs> That's it. I've had it. You know, Bob Guerin, when he was a Yankee, he played for Billy Martin. And I, I'm not sure if he if he absorbed any of those argument skills or not. Here's Adam Rosales now. And that is called a strike. And I think Alex Rios is thrown out of the game. Ozzie coming out to talk with Andy Fletcher. He has had two different zones tonight. There's no question about that. He was squeezing Burley and Hudson had a wide plate. And he had called a couple on Alex earlier that Alex didn't appreciate. Well, you could see McCann. I mean, that's Ross behind the plate actually jerked the ball back over the corner to make it look better than it was. Out to left. Here comes Rivera. Put back. Now Blake Turner falls in for a base hit. And for the second. Out in second. The run doesn't count. The Angels win it. The tag at second base. Applied before Reed Johnson scores. This game is over. Over to first. And Venable is back in. Padres, oh, a balk called here. And the Rays were upset last night on the balk called against Shields, and Garza is upset here. Wow. And Joe Madden's going to come out. The balk call last night turned out to be fairly critical. Sure did. And. Well, that led to a run in the seventh inning of the game last night. So. I mean, I know you got to show distance and direction. You can't, you got to step. But, you know, these are moves like James Shields said. It's a move he makes all the time. He's never been called in his career on it. So that, I agree with him on that. Now, what, what's happening here? Joe just wants to know what he did. You can't argue box. You get kicked out as a manager. He just wants to know what he did all of a sudden. Unbelievable, almost identical situation as yesterday. Yeah. And uh, kind of a long distance conversation. And now Cedarstrom uh, strides in from second base as Coldworth comes out. And 
Madden has been ejected, and Madden was being demonstrative toward Garza, and uh, Cedarstrom came into the mound, and now with the ejection, Madden will uh, say whatever he wants. Uh, you know, a, a buck is supposed to be called if you deceive the runner. I mean, Venable didn't get deceived. He got back easily. He had a one-way lead. That's all that was, and Garza does what he normally does. James Shields yesterday does what he normally does. These guys haven't been called all year on it, and now all of a sudden, two games in a row, Tiki Tack Bach is being called. I understand if a guy starts and stops or something like that. I don't blame Joe Madden for getting kicked out. You can't argue Box, and he wanted to argue it, and he also brought up, I'm sure, yesterday's Bach to field in Kubrick. And Cedarson kicks him out. Here's the ball. I, I don't get it. And, uh, you know, Madden is a creative guy. When <laughs> Cedarstrom came in, he became very demonstrative, demonstrative here toward Garza. And, and, and as I love Cedarstrom it. eavesdropped on the conversation, he didn't like what he heard. He I love it. And Madden. That was great. I, I love it. Well, the bases remain loaded. And a chopper slowly hit up the first baseline. That's going to get another run home. Carmona misses Victorino. Oh, they're going to say he went out of the base path. The Ooh. run scores. The Phillies lead it 3 0. Oh, that's close. Charlie's going to come out and argue because Davey Lopes argued. An RBI for Victorino with Valdez crossing the plate. Boy, it's a goofy game, huh? Goofy in it. Weird stuff going on here. Craig Gibson, as uh, Tom said, is going to rule the Victorino went out of the baseline to avoid the tag. It's an unassisted putout for Carmona. Well, this is a judgment call by the first base umpire Greg Gibson. Here he goes after him. Well, he's on the grass. He is out of the baseline. I don't know. So, you know, those things sometimes are so arbitrary. Um, maybe, maybe Charlie's pointing uh, and saying a home plate umpire has a much better look at that than you do, and the play was before the bag, so it's his call. That's a great shot of the reflection in Greg Gibson's uh -oh. sunglasses. And an even better shot with Gibson ejecting Charlie for the fourth time this year. They are bill to bill right now as Charlie's going to get his point across. Well, he's mad this time. He wasn't that mad the other night when he got thrown out. But he is really hot. Take it easy, Chuck. It's a hot day out there. But he's burning. Whatever he got from Gibson, he didn't like it. Ooh, this is a good one. He just said, don't you ever talk to me like that ever. <laughs> he got his money's worth. Jerry Davis, the crew chief, coming up to try to cool down Big Chuck. I think Charlie really wanted the home plate umpire to get involved, Tommy. Probably did. He pointed to him a couple yeah. times. Because, you know, the home plate umpire, uh, Holbrook, who threw him out the other night, has a better look at that than the first base umpire where his angle was, uh, at least in Charlie's opinion. are not a fan. He and Eric Cooper have jawed before. That's a pitch you don't see called well, very often. But you know what? It's a strike. Yeah, in spite of where the tracker shows it, generally that pitch is not called a strike. Big bad Vlad on deck. Guerrero swinging a bat, hoping to come up this inning. But he will not. Kinsler throws the bat in the helmet in disgust, and Cooper's telling him to go pick it up. And now Kinsler's thrown out of the game because he didn't do it. The Rangers will have to go with a different second base from the rest of the way. So you could tell just from body language, Cooper was instructing Kinsler, if you're going to litter like that, you better go pick it up. And Kinsler is making no move towards his own equipment. Well, what, what happened, Josh, was not, not to go pick it up, but then he threw his batting glove. He threw the bat, he threw his helmet. 
Cooper pointed at that, and then he threw the batting glove up mm. in the air, and I think that was the final straw for Cooper. And, you know, if he had to do it over again to stay in the game, he probably wouldn't throw his batting glove. He's upset with the calls. And the three, one nothing, Houston. One and two. Got it. Loney slams a helmet down. That might cost him a little money. It used to be in the old days if you, yep, he's kicked out, but the game's over. But it'll probably cost him a few bucks. Casey Blake says something, and Loney has gone after Cuzzy as he walks in the runway. When you throw your helmet in the old days, if you threw any kind of equipment, it cost you a hundred bucks. Matt Kemp is furious, as was Loney. Blake appeared to be annoyed as well, and all Rivera did was strike out the side. So the last four Dodgers struck out. Two runs, seven hits, and no errors for the Yankees. Here's the pitch, and look at Loney. The umpire walking stride for stride, and Phil now says, You're out of here, but of course the game is over. Then, does he points to the Dodger dugout and Loney angry again? He just grabs the ball and throws another one. There was one this year that I saw. The best pitch he was going to see. Strike two with the knees. Anderson was already headed to first base. Has a few words with Chris Guccione. And that was a cutter. It's a backdoor cutter on the outer half to the left hander. He starts it off the plate and he brings it in and it's a strike. Excellent call, says Kazo. But I think the Dodgers are really upset because of the old two pitch. We saw the Curtis that could have been strike three and they didn't get it. Which Kazo also thought was strike three. There is Huffman. You're going to hear all the Yankee fans. They're the only ones left. Dodger fans leave when they're ahead. He's late in the ball game. There are some Dodger fans. Now Garrett Addis is going after the umpire, Guccione again. Uh, coming across back across the uh, infield when Garrett is running by the mound, between the mound, and he kind of jawed at him a little bit. And he got the heave ho. So Joe Torrey picks up the argument now. And Joe's question was, what did he say to you? Anderson, who was the replacement, as a defensive replacement for Manny Ramirez. Well, remember, Ethier said something to him as well when he came back after what the, the first pitch was called a strike, and he didn't like the first strike call. He didn't like. Well, that makes the Dodger bench a little thinner. Kemp getting the day off. They have to not play. Jerry Crawford, the crew chief and the third base umpire tonight, stepping in, trying to disarm this rather heated situation. Best ball for a ball. Cutter up high. Cutter just misses in. We're three and zero. Oh. Joe said that might have been the best pitch he was going to see to hit because here comes a cutter on the back door right at the knees. That's the one the argument started with, and now back there a high strike out and then a little jog back, a little jawing. Didn't really show him up to the no, fans. It no. was just directly to the umpire. Strike three call and another rejection. The second Dodger to be thrown out of this game in the last two innings. A 
And I think Russell Martin earned that ejection. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's saying he got his money's worth. Well, Garrett Anderson did not. He was trotting on the cross the field. He didn't even know he was thrown out. There's a lot of frustration with the Dodgers right now. You think about how they were starting to spiral down. They got a big win yesterday, and then they had this game in hand, about to win a series, first time in a long time. And there's just that's a pile up of frustration. Not just one at bat. That's the Yankees. That's losing. That's the offense struggling at times. Just coming to a head. Twenty one of thirty two first pitch strikes. You can add to it now. And you hear right now Tony gets thrown out of this game as Mark Carlson has heard enough. Talking about that high pitch. Very mild protest. And I'm sure there was a couple pitches that were not called or called against Cardinal hitters and not called against Arizona hitters in Tony's month. Now Aaron will start to just play catch, stay loose. Is a good delaying tactic, as you say. You know, from that standpoint, Tony's not thinking about that. He's upset with the strike zone, and it's not the first one he's upset. He's talking now with Jeff Kellogg, the third base umpire and crew chief, and Aaron is doing the right thing by staying sharp, getting some loose. But argue balls and strikes, it's automatic. The ejection. on Ryan Howard he went with a fastball outside and you wonder if he'll do it again here or drop the slider on him. Ibanez did not like that call he thought that one was low and they're getting it from the Philly dugout right now and Charlie Manuel is going to come out here and talk to C.B. Bucknor and he's with an eyelash to being tossed and there he goes. Well uh, he'll get a, his money's worth here I'm sure. He's telling CB that that ball was down and he saw it from the dugout. CB not saying a word. Not a single word. You know, there are some umpires that will engage a manager into a discussion and both of them get animated. CB's just doing, he's, he's doing his best. Now he's saying that he brushed him with his hat. Yeah. What does our Fox track say? Thirty seventh ejection since two thousand two for Manuel. Beckham singled with his 20th RBI in the second inning. One ball, one strike. And doing the best he can, try to move the ball around, misses inside. Well, let's come back with a little cutter, try to get it down the way. So far tonight, that's been his best opportunity. You know, if he could throw that pitch every time, a cutter that started over towards the middle of the plate, hitting the outside corner, and now. Here comes Ozzie again, who just threw his lineup card all over the place. And I believe he was just ejected by home plate umpire Tim Timmons. Now remember, after the top of the first inning, Tim Timmons walked over to the Royals dugout and had a conversation with Ned Yost. And we don't know what it was about, but we thought perhaps as Tim Timmons 
was not calling some pitches that looked like strikes and appeared to be in the Fox tracks grid. Ozzie's going to get his money's worth. Well, Ozzie will generally say whatever it is on his mind. If they're complaining about the, the strike zone right now, kind of surprised he's doing it in a ball game like this because this guy is absolutely carving it up. Gavin Floyd is having a super night, and if you got a game going like that, I think you want to just kind of keep it going along without disturbing anything. 